All right, welcome to podcast number three, um, the second one on cross sections, and this is actually going to be the last one, and the first one wasn't very long, so uh, it didn't take me long to do these podcasts. All right, so you have to use your imagination a little bit because I'm trying to take something two-dimensional and make it look three-dimensional. All right, so now, so imagine those pictures that I put in the beginning. That might help a little bit too. Um, now the we've got the, the we're going to find the volume of the figure formed by y equals x. That's the red line. Uh, x equals zero, which is the the y-axis, and y equals x squared minus two x, which is the blue line or the blue graph. Um, and so that's the that's the our our base of our figure. The cross sections are squares, right? So just imagine this thing, whatever shape this is, it, it's got a, a square top, right? Um, but the the green shaded area is the bottom, and the the squares are trying to show you what the top looks like. The only thing is, there's not going to be just two squares. I just can't draw any more in. Um, I don't know why there's squares floating around here. They probably were in here too, and I probably just can't get them to fit back in again. Um, but these probably belonged over here, and it probably just didn't look any better. So all of these are represented by these these squares, all these cross sections. Um, so now we have to think about, all right, what do we know about a square? Well, I know what I know about a square is that all the sides are the same. So whatever the the side is that goes from blue to red, red to blue, um, is going to be, I know why I didn't use this one, because it looks like it's going from blue to blue. And it's not, it's going from red to blue. So what we're finding here, maybe we should just get rid of it, it's kind of in the way, don't you think? Um, what we're really finding here is um, the area between the curves, and then that's the bottom, that's our base, and then if we integrate that area in terms of a square, then we get our volume. All right, so our cross sections are squares. So whatever one side is, the other side is identical. So yeah, that line's kind of useless too. Whatever, uh, let me write in a different color. Purple it is. So whatever this length is, S, this length is going to be exactly the same. I don't know why there's a B here, but we'll just get rid of him too. All right, so they're going to be exactly the same. So we could represent the area as side squared. We're going to be integrating from, and our side is going to go from top to bottom. So the length of the side is just the distance, it's just the, 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 distance between the red line and the blue line. And if we get the area of that, we've, we've got the sum of all the, the bottom of, one, of the sides of the square. And if we square it, then we've got squares and not just sides. All right, so we're, we're integrating top minus bottom because we're, uh, we're integrating with respect to x. All right, so um, our top function is the line, x, and our Bottom function is the x squared minus 2x. So now if we distribute, we subtract the x squared minus 2x from the x, we're going to have 3x minus x squared. That represents one side. If we square it, we got two sides, we got the area of a square. Right? Um, so I'm going to go from the, along the bottom here, and then I'll go up to the top, the points of integration. So we have uh, 3x minus x all squared. That's going to give us 9x squared minus 6x cubed plus x to the fourth. All right, so we know where to integrate, where our interval is, simply by where these two lines intersect. So if we set x equals x squared minus 2x equal to one another, we have x squared minus 3x. Uh, you could factor out the x, so you've got x times x minus 3, so it goes from 0 to 3. That's our interval. So now if we integrate the area of the square, which is 3x minus, excuse me, which is 9x squared minus 6x cubed plus x to the fourth, and we evaluate that from 0 to 3, guess what we get? We get the volume. So volume is the area of the cross sections, dx. Right? So our, the area of a, one cross section, and it so always has to be defined in terms of the functions, is 9x squared minus 6x cubed plus x to the fourth dx. 
And so now we integrate that. So v of x equals 9x uh, cubed divided by 3 minus 6x to the 4th divided by 4 plus x to the 5th divided by 5. Uh, evaluated from 0 to 3. So if you go along the bottom here um, where I have v of x equals, I just simplified that. So we have 3x cubed minus 3 halves x to the 4th plus x to the 5th divided by 5. Evaluate from 0 to 3. So now we just, the if I plug in 0, I'm going to get 0. So I'm just kind of showing that minus 0. And so when we evaluate that, we get 81 minus 243 halves my, plus 243 fifths. That actually, um, I if I only included one decimal, it probably um, terminates at one decimal. Um, I couldn't, and it makes sense that it would because um, my denominator, my, my least common denominator would have been 10. So 8.1 is the volume of that, of that figure. Okay? So we're using, this is three-dimensional. So the, the part that you see on the graph, that's the bottom. And then the sides are represented by whatever, our whatever the shape of our cross-section is. Okay? So you can let me know if you have questions on this one. I have these all written up because I figured it might be a little faster for me to kind of, if I don't have to worry about how it looks or remembering I, if I included everything. Um, it looked pretty good to me, so I didn't mess with it when I looked over what I had written already. All right, let's look at the next one. All right, so I have to really apologize for what this one looks like. <laughs> um, not that it's as difficult to solve, it's just difficult for me to draw a picture. So we here want to find the volume of the figure formed by y equals 4x minus x squared and y equals x squared, whose cross sections are equal at all triangles. So when we're setting these up, by the way, make sure you graph the graph the bottom first, and then to the best of your ability, draw a cross-section. What really matters is where do the dimensions come from, right? So, I mean, my figure here looks nothing three-dimensional. It looks like a two-dimensional shape with triangles plucked all over it. However, I can see that one side is the value of the function. Um, that's my base. And then the height is the distance to the, the vertex there. Of my of each of the triangles, so let's see how we can represent that. All right, so these are equilateral triangles, and so remember something special about equilateral triangles is that the heights are all this, the the uh, sides are all the same. So these altitudes vary predictably with my base, right? So whatever my base is, I don't know if I wrote it in here, so I'm going to write it in now. I'm going to write in another color that's not up here. I haven't been using purple much, I guess. So purple it is. Um, I've been using that purple today, but not normally. Um, so let's just, let's just call this S for now. So if one side is S, right, this is from here to here is half of S, right? So, and then if this is a 60, 60, 60, that means the altitude here will cut this in half. This is 30 this is 90, this is 60. So that's the, sh the one half S is the short side. We always said this is S, right, because uh, they're all the same. Um, all three sides are the same on the equilateral triangle. And then the altitude here, that's the long side opposite the 60 degree angle, is just going to be one half S times the square root of 3. All right, and that thing is an S, not a 5. Um, so it varies predictably. So in other words, whatever my, my s is going to be defined in terms of my function there. And if I take half of the value and multiply by the square root of 3, I'll get the altitude. So that makes each of these kind of easy to figure out. The, the blue graph there is one function. It's the parabola 4x minus x squared. I guess I should call it blue curve. The black curve is the other function, and that's y equals x squared. Um, to figure out where the, where, the, um, where the interval of integration is, you just set those two equal to one another because it's the two intersection points. So we have 4x minus x squared equals x squared. That gives us 4x minus 2x squared equals 0. Factor out of 2x, and so we have x is 0 and x is 2. So those are our, our interval of integration. All right, so the area of a triangle. So 
I first think of what's the area for my cross section. So um, you can use that, that formula for um, the equilateral triangle. In this problem, I kind of like just thinking it is one half base times height and then identifying my base and height. So kind of two options there. B is the base of the triangle and H is the height or the altitude. All right, so we've got to integrate top minus bottom. That's the distance between. That'll give me my, um, that gives me my base. So my base is just the top minus bottom. And the height is half that times square root of three, right? All right, so um, the base is going to be the top was 4x minus x squared. Boy, that looks a little funky, doesn't it? And nah, it's stuck that way. So 4x minus x squared, and then I'm subtracting x squared. So I've got 4x minus 2x squared. That's the green line I drew in, that green dotted line. Right? That represents that, that base. Right? So now the height... Right, I just take half of that. Well, half of 4x minus 2x squared is 2x minus x squared times the square root of 3. So that's where this 1 half, where I wrote 1 half s times the square root of 3, that's where we get that value, right? So I wrote it in also along the sides here that each of our, um, our lengths, our, our bases here for the equilateral triangles, those are all 4x minus 2x squared, and then... I take half of that and then multiply it by the square root of 3 because it's a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So I tried to write that in there. So hopefully this is clear. And if not, please, you know, have me go over this with you. All right, so now I just need to integrate the areas of all those equilateral, tri of all those equilateral triangles. So I'm going to uh, integrate 1 half times. So my height was the square root of 3 times 2x minus x squared. Let's pull out the square root of 3, right? Um, I may as well pull that out of the integral altogether. So I've got the square root of 3 over 2, and then I've got to uh, multiply the base times the height. So it means I'm multiplying 4x minus 2x squared times 2x minus x squared. That gives us, uh, when we simplify there, x, 8x squared minus 8x cubed plus 2x to the fourth. So the, um, I could factor out a 2 out of all of those, right, because we, we can factor out the coefficients. So I could do each one separately and factor out an 8, a negative 8, and a 2. Um, but all I did do is I factored out the 2 because they're all divisible by 2, uh, and that cancels out the 2 on the bottom there of that fraction. So our volume is going to be the square root of 3 from 0 to 2, uh, 4x squared minus 4x cubed plus x to the fourth dx. And sometimes that may be all there is on an FRQ where you don't have to evaluate it. But if I have to evaluate it, all I do is integrate and I substitute my values, which isn't any big deal. And I think actually integrating it, that's the easy part. Setting this up is the hard part. And not so much with the algebra, it's just how do you represent your cross sections. Right? And so once you try them, I think you know, that'll help you because you'll be thinking about how do I set this up. So here I just integrated and evaluated. So you can kind of just look that over. Um, you know, just, it's just the power rule in all of these. And I plugged in a 2, and mine is 0 because I'm going to get a 0 and I plug that in anyway. So my volume was 16 times the square root of 3 over 15. Right? So just, just a little bit of computation there. All right, let's move on to the next problem. I think, I don't know how many more there are, but not too many. Oh, this is the last, this is the last problem. This one is a tricky problem, and notice I say, I say the word calculator. This is a calculator problem. Matter of fact, I would, you can, if you want, you can integrate this, and not required to integrate in the calculator, but you might want to do that for plugging in. Um, so let R be the region in the first quadrant, and this was an old AP question. Bounded by the x-axis and the graphs of y equals natural log of x and y equals 5 minus x in the figure shown below, uh, above, or to the right. Find the area of R. So R is that whole thing there. Notice, so now this isn't a volume problem. This one is a, this first part, A is an area problem. Um, notice we have to split it into two because I've got Y equals zero is the bottom curve for either one of them, right? Because I'm bound by the x-axis. Um, but for the curved part there, my upper curve is natural log of x. And for the straight, uh, straight part there, uh, my upper curve is 5 minus x. How to find where they intersect? I used a calculator. Um, 
you can't solve natural log of x equals 5 minus x. Um, whatever, you want, whatever you do to free the x from the natural log of x, you're going to make the other one much worse. So uh, that's a calculator problem in terms of finding that, that value for the integration. And I had rounded it to two decimals on this, this particular one. So it switches over at 3.69, um, and we would integrate. All right, so natural log of x dx. Um, and you might look at that and go, where'd you get that one from? I'm going to give you a table of, of, of integrals and derivatives. There are some that they can be integrated, but they're because we know what they're going to be and we use a table of values. They're not ones that are naturally ones we saw about, like the, kind of like the arc tan ones. Um, it go, uh, we know that this is the formula for arctan. Well, this was the formula for natural log of x. All right, so we have x, natural log of x minus x. That's directly off the table. Um, and we're evaluating that one from 1 to 3.69. And then power rule for 5 minus x, just 5x minus x squared to the fifth. And now all I do is plug in and I evaluate. So for the a part of this, uh, it's 2.988 was the area. Okay. I don't think I did the C at all. Um, I didn't, do, and I'm not going to do the C in this one. I'm going to just stick to the A and the B. <laughs> That's enough for you to think about. Um, so, B, uh, B region R is the base of a solid. Um, we already know what the area is, right? Because we just figured it out a moment ago. Um, and for the solid, each cross section perpendicular to the x-axis. So we've got vertical slices. So we're integrating with respect to x. Right, but do not evaluate an expression involving one or more integrals that gives the volume of the solid. All you had to know was you integrate area and, had, and where the boundaries are if you, and how to set this one up. All right, so our, our cross sections, so, and, now, and we're not integrating the area of the bottom. All right, that's not it. <coughs> Excuse me, um, because this has this is three dimensional and it it's extending off of off of that figure. But what we are integrating is the area of the cross section. That's key on the volume of cross sections, um, because it's not just what we see. It's this three dimensional top to it. You know that's that's rising from the base. These are squares, right? So what we know about a square is one side's the same as the other. So notice that I can represent everybody from zero, 1 to 3.69 as the height of whatever natural log of x is. And since it's the one side's the same as the other, the area is natural log of x squared. So that represents the area of my cross sections from 1 to where they intersect, 3.69. What represents the area of the cross sections for the rest of it? I just square the function 5 minus x squared, right? Because each of our lengths is defined by our function. And if I want the area of a square, right, because these are squares rising uh, from it, um, then I have to square 5 minus x squared. It says, write but do not evaluate. That means if I set up what I've got right here, I am done, all right? Don't, don't, do, don't do more than what's asked for on these FRQs. That's all that's asked for is that you set this one up. Okay. Um, and I don't know what happened to y equals k, but it's not on my picture here. Um, and it's not the line I drew in. So uh, I'm, I'm going to leave it at these two, and that, I think, ends my podcast. I don't think I have anything else. Oh, except the closing. Um, and did I, I remember to do the... Oh, look at that. I did not do the closing. <laughs> I set it up. However, let's, let's do the closing. And I'm going to simplify this a little bit. I'm going to give you only one problem. And by the way, this closing is in your notes. I'm going to give you just one of these problems, not two. All right, so the one I included in the notes, that's going to be our closing. I wasn't sure if I was going to do a different thing. Um, so I'm going to kind of set you up on what to do, and then you do it. Um, you do not have to do this on graph paper. Um, when we graph these, it doesn't have to be a, a meticulously accurate um, to scale graph. It has to be a, a, a model that you could use to set up how to, you know, the integral. 
All right, so what you're going to do is your first step, um, you're, you're going to find the volume, and I probably should write the words find the volume, find the volume of all right, the the solid bound by the given functions with the um, given cross sections. I was only going to do one, though. All right, so your the area is bound by y equals x squared and y equals 4. So your first step is you're going to graph your functions. All right, your cross sections are squares. Draw in your cross sections. It doesn't have to be a great figure. You saw what mine looked like. Um, but you want to be able to figure out how to represent the area of your cross sections. That's the whole point in drawing them in. Um, determine how to use the function or functions to determine the area of the cross sections. Number four, find the limits of integration. Hint, hint, hint. Set the functions equal to one another and solve. Okay, I'll even put that in there. Set functions, I need more space. I will, I will scroll back up to that, by the way. Set functions equal to each other and solve. Right. Set up the integral. Boy, but the word integral looks kind of weird. What happened to my A? And then integrate. an extra R in there, integrate and evaluate. And that's, that's your steps. That's your steps for this. So again, here is, I can't scroll up. Oops, you don't want to see that. You just want to see the problem. Come on, come on. Don't make me walk over to the computer. All right, uh, almost, there we go. All right, so you want, there's your functions, y equals x squared and y equals 4. You graph them. And your cross sections are squares, right? I gave you the easy one, not the equilateral triangles, right, for your closing. All right, so when, after you've watched this, uh, complete the closing and have me check it. And if you have any questions, let me know. All right, hope you enjoyed the podcast. Bye.